Good. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely not going to get through everything today. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as Greg said, my name's Joe, and this is essential customizations that would be child themes and feature plugins. I'm pretty sure we're not going to get to both today, but we're going we're gonna to see what we can do. The slides to this talk are available now. Uh, there, if you are so inclined, if you want to get online and look at them, um, you can go to shoeflydesign.org slash files slash WCLAX hyphen 2015. Or you can just watch them, you know, whatever. Whatever you like. Okay, so first of all, uh, like Greg said, my name's Joe. Um, I am a freelancer. I've been doing this for 15 years or something like that. I train on JavaScript with lynda.com and uh, I train on WordPress in various places. I have a, a course on WordPress plugin development coming out next month, hopefully, on O'Reilly as well, if you're into that kind of thing. But today, we're talking about child themes and feature, feature plugins. That is the jargon that we're going to be dealing with today. And we're going to start with child themes, because they're a really nice entry point into really getting your WordPress site customized just the way you like. So, what is a child theme? Uh, show of hands, please. Does anybody know what a child theme is already? OK, a bunch of hands. Good. So um, just for those of you that didn't raise your hand, it's a theme that is based on another one. That's it. So if you have downloaded a theme and you think, oh, this is, you know, this is great, almost, a child theme is a way that you can take it all the way, hopefully. The one that it's based on is called the parent theme. So, what is a child theme for? I hear you cry. It's for that last 5 to 20%. So, anything that you, can, that you might want to do that doesn't involve CSS, you will absolutely have to do a child theme to get it. With a, uh, many themes will come with some feature that lets you add CSS to the, uh, to the settings or something like that, and that can give you a certain amount of customization, but if there's anything you want to do that goes beyond that, a child theme is what you want to do. Okay, what is the child theme not for? If you want to start from scratch and write something completely customized, a child theme is not what you want to do. For that, you want to use another framework, probably. I mean, you can start completely from scratch with, you know, absolutely nothing. But if you're interested in starting something completely from scratch, I'd recommend looking at underscores, which you can find at underscores.me, or another theme called Sage, which you can find at roots.io slash sage, or from these links, which are in the slides. <clears throat> OK, so how do you make a child theme? This is the really easy part. First, you make a folder. Second, you make a CSS file. And it doesn't even have to have anything meaningful in it. We'll take a look at what you actually do need to make it work. But it's just a CSS file. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, so making one is really easy. It's, uh, once you actually get to the point that you need to decide what to do, uh, that's where the, you know, the potentially more difficult stuff comes in. But uh, I just want to make it clear that even if you're not a developer, even if you've never really touched much in the way of, uh, of the actual files that make up WordPress, this stuff is, is a, you know, it's, the barrier to entry is quite low. So if you want to get a little fancy, I, I, I wasn't uh, entirely truthful there. Uh, this is all you need to get started with a child theme. And if you only want to make CSS customizations, those first two steps are all you need to do. For stuff that gets a little bit fancier, um, you can add another file called functions.php. And that is where you can add, like what Matt was talking about, for those of you who were in the previous talk, uh, I think it was the, uh, so this would take up the functions that that modular CSS plugin and the, uh, my, I think it's the my custom function PHP file, whatever that thing was called. Yes? Right, we're going we're gonna to look at that. Um, this, this is all, uh, this is not to be feared. Um, so yeah, anyway, the, the functions.php file will cover that, uh, that ad those additional things that you might need that are beyond a style sheet. Okay, 
That's everything that we need to talk about just to kind of get you up to speed on the front end. Let's actually look at a real site and put one together. This microphone is even more tired than I am. OK, good. Actually, let's back out here. Alrighty, so I have WordPress running on my computer. Um, is there anybody in here who uh, has never done this before? Run WordPress on your own machine. I want to see hands up, please. Great. Okay, so let me let me point you at a couple resources to get you uh, to get you going on that particular aspect of things. Because being able to run WordPress on your own computer saves you tons of hassle because it means that you can experiment and not worry about things so much. You don't have to think about, oh, I might break my site. So the uh, one really nice option and one of the sponsors of this uh, conference is Desktop Server by ServerPress. Um, you should definitely go talk to them. They're, they're right out there. They're super nice. And uh, Desktop Server is a it's free software that you can download and install on your computer. It can, it's available for Windows and OS X. And then you can install WordPress just in a folder on your computer, and you can start experimenting with, with this stuff without ever touching the internet, which is very nice. Um, and there's also other things like you know, a more generic web stack like MAMP if you're uh, a Mac user, or XAMPP, which is basically the same thing but starts with an X. So these are ways that you can run WordPress on your own machine. We're not going to go into the details of that right now. I just want to give you those links so that you can check them out later. OK, so back here, here is my WordPress installation on my machine. And I have some themes. You might not be able to see this. Let me uh, make this a little bigger. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yes. OK. So I've got my plugins folder. I've got my themes folder. I have 2016, which is the upcoming core theme. And I have Storefront, which is a WooCommerce or I should say, a, well, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a WooCommerce theme, which comes from Woo Themes, also free. And then there's a commercial plugin, uh, rather a commercial theme here called Port. And all of these are child theme friendly. So let's take a look at the actual WordPress site and check out those themes. Alrighty. So I've got my themes. There are a few others because my WordPress installation is a little fancy, and so some of the uh, core stuff is hidden. But you get the idea. We've got themes. So let's make a child theme. This is, this is how it works. I'm going to make a folder. And I'm going to make a child theme of 2016. So I'm going to start with 2016 and activate it on the site. Is it already active? It is already active. Good. So this is what it looks like. And uh, oh, by the way, this, uh, this WordPress site that I'm running also is, there's no uh, custom content in here that I've, that I've added. Everything comes from a testing framework, which when you're starting to experiment, when you're, like if you, get into, if you get into really serious theming and you want to be like, well, I'm, I'm going to start my WordPress theme and I want to know what this is going to look like if somebody is doing something really crazy with their site, like say they've got a million categories over here on the right side, or they have pages with comically long names, or maybe some of these menus are really deeply nested. You can see that, that 2016 might need a little work in this regard. Um, when you want to do testing like that, there's a nice place to get that kind of stuff, and it's at wptest.io. It's just an XML file that you can download and then use the WordPress importer plugin to just import a bunch of dummy data makes things a lot easier. All right. So I made a folder called 2016 child. You can call this anything you want. It does not matter. Um, I would recommend not using spaces or you know, anything like that. If it's, it should be something internet safe. But it can be called whatever you want, just a folder. And then inside this folder, I'm going to create a style sheet. And I'm using. Um, a file manager on my Mac called Pathfinder, which lets me just create a new file right here. 
but you can duplicate a file, just whatever, whatever you need to do. Go into your favorite text editor and create the file and just call it style.css. That's the important part. So you make the file, there it is, and we're already most of the way there. To actually edit this file, I'm going to switch to my editor. I like PHP Storm. You can use whatever you want. Sublime Text, Text Wrangler, uh, Emacs, you know, I don't know, VI. Let's open that file. Okay, so the important part with making your first child theme is that you're going to need to add the right metadata at the top, which is just basically a CSS comment. I do this so often that I have a little macro on my machine so I can just type WP child and it expands all the stuff out for me. Can you, whoop, pardon me, sir. Uh, can you actually read this? Yeah, I, I hear a lot of no's, so let's see. Let me adjust the uh, style of this thing so you can maybe, actually, you know what? Let's do something different. I'm gonna switch over here. Is that a little more legible? Yeah. Great, okay. So this is just a comment, which means it's delimited by a slash and an asterisk, and then it ends with an asterisk and a slash. And this just means that it's not going to be interpreted by the browser. So WordPress uses this stuff to tell you what this theme is and show it to you in the dashboard. And it's just, the format is just like this. You can find this on the WordPress codex if you search for child theme. It's, it's all over the place, just, or Google child theme and everywhere you will see this stuff. So what I need to do is give this theme a name. So it's being based on 2016, so I might call this something like 2016 child or whatever I like. You can call this literally anything you want. Description, not important, but you can set it to something here. Child theme of 2016, that's great. Identify yourself, uh, you can add your name and a URI. These are optional, but I like to add them just so I can remember which ones I've actually made. And then the most important part is this template line. And this is the folder name of your original parent theme, which here is 2016. So I'm just going to copy that, go back over here, and paste it in. OK. So having done this, I'm going to copy it over into my actual file here over in PHP Storm. Paste it in there. I've saved it. And now, when I switch back to my site, I'm logged in here. I'm going to browse to my themes. And here it is, 2016 child. So now I can activate this. And this will be the active theme. Now, I've done nothing else. And let's look at this. This is not going to probably be what, we're, what we want exactly. So we've lost all of the styling. Why is that? Because we've based this on the parent theme, and the style.css overrides that same file in the parent theme. So we lose all that stuff. And there's two ways that you can deal with this. Well, there's at least two ways. I mean, there's a bunch of ways, but we're going to go with two good ones. The first and the easiest one, if you're comfortable with CSS, is just to import the style sheet from the parent theme. We just use the import directive, and then we tell the style sheet, uh, and then we tell our browser, our theme, where to find the thing. So we're going to back out one level from where our theme is installed with the two dots. Add in, whoops, add in the uh, name of the parent theme here. That's the folder where it's found. And then we'll just import its style.css file. Does this make sense? Thumbs up. So we'll switch back and reload this guy. And now we've got all the styles that come from the parent theme. That's one way you can do it. If you want to get a little fancy, you can also add your functions.php file and then use wp in queue style, which is a built-in PHP function for WordPress that will queue up the style that way. If you're, but I, I mean, I just want to let you know that that's available, but this way is fine. And uh, for, most, for most purposes, you it's... You can do one or the other, yeah. Doing, doing both, you'll end up with the, with the style sheet being loaded twice, and you know there's no point in that. 
there every once in a while, like people who are really into front end performance don't necessarily like importing style sheets like this. If you use WP in Q style, then you get the uh, you get the capability of having plugins remove styles or add them, which is kind of nice if you're uh, if you really need to have fine grained control over things. But we're just getting started with this, and this is a totally great way to do this. So having done this, now everything that I put in this style sheet is going to be loaded on the site. So anything else that I want to do, I can do. So I can change the background color, excuse me, change the background color on the body to red and the color to white. And this is going to look really good. Yep, awesome. <laughs> this is the best, right? <laughs> Um, the point is that it's really easy to do. So now, once you've gotten to this point, now any CSS changes that you want to make, you can do in this theme, and you didn't have to do much work. The other nice thing about child themes is that, oh, well, uh, to back up, I said that this style.css file overrides what is in the parent theme, and that applies to every single other file except one in the parent theme. So let's say, here in 2016, it's got a bunch of files. By the way, uh, how many of you have actually looked at the contents of a theme before? It's a lot of files. Um, so any of these that are normal WordPress template files can be overridden in your child theme. So let's go back here, and I've actually reverted that delightful change I made earlier. So let's scroll down to the bottom here. And let's say I wanted to modify this footer. There is, in every WordPress theme, for the most part, a footer.php file which controls the footer. So if I copy this file into my child theme, I'm doing this on my Mac by just holding Option when I drag it. So now I have my style.css file and my footer.php. Groovy. I can open it in here. And now I can change this file. And the, so the deal here is, that you can make changes to pieces of the parent theme that you don't like, but you can still let the parent theme continue to be updated. So if there are bug fixes, if there's some kind of weird security issue with the parent theme, it can still be updated. And all, the only thing that I need to worry about is any files that I've overridden and make sure that anything that is affected there is updated in my file. But everything else stays the same. So let's say I wanted to say, instead of proudly powered by WordPress, this site runs WordPress. Reload again. Holy mackerel. There we go. Yep. So that change is there. So I mean, this is all trivial stuff, but this, the same thing applies to any change that you want to make. Yes? We're going to talk about that in like two seconds. So this works with pretty much any theme that you can get from WordPress.org. This procedure will work right out of the box. You don't need to worry about anything else. But there are some issues. I mean, obviously, not everybody is using the free themes that come from WordPress.org. In fact, probably, arguably, most of the sites out there aren't using those themes. So what do we do about those situations? This is where we talk about picking a parent theme. So the question is, is this theme, is this parent theme child theme friendly? This is a, uh, this is a, a heuristic that you can use when you're shopping around for themes that you might use. Because there are quite a few out there that, uh, you know, there can be some overlap in the way they look. But the way these different, especially commercial themes, work under the hood can be very different. So I usually look for language in the description of the theme uh, uh, in the, um, on the marketing site for those commercial themes, and specifically look to see if they mention child theming being something that you can do. That means that they're thinking about that for, uh, ahead of time, and it's probably a little bit better built. Sometimes uh, commercial theme authors will offer a child theme that you can just download from them with all of the work that just 
backbreaking work that I just did already done for you. But, the, th but the, uh, the tricky thing with that is that sometimes the work is a little bit of a challenge. Like he was saying, there can be framework files that are built into that theme, and sometimes you can run into those issues as well. And I'll talk about that in a second. But another thing that you want to look at is whether the theme is consistently updated. If it's a theme that hasn't been touched in quite a long time, then it's arguably not a good thing to base your site on because WordPress changes all the time. It takes backward compatibility very seriously, but you really do want something that's going to be attended to at least somewhat regularly over time. And then are the HTML and the CSS any good? Now this is something that you have to be a little bit more of a, at least have a, a web developer's mindset to potentially think in these terms. But if, that is, if that's you and that's where, where, your, um, where your thinking goes, definitely look at the theme and really evaluate it. One thing that you can do that's easy if you're, uh, if you're interested in, or if you know CSS is do you see important everywhere in that CSS file? This is thankfully, in my experience, relatively rare, but you st I, I do still see it occasionally. And basically, if I see that keyword anywhere in a theme, I'm probably going to get rid of it because it makes it just more of a struggle to override and that indicates to me that the CSS was not written very well. Another thing that you can look at is whether it overrides core assets. So WordPress comes with copies of tons of JavaScript libraries built in. They're not always included in the theme, but plugins have access to them and your theme has access to them as well. So if a theme author, for example, includes their own copy of jQuery somewhere in there, I'm not going to say run away, but I'm going to say look twice and, uh, and really make sure that that what they're doing, see if you can figure out whether they're doing that for the right reasons. Um, there are ways that you can override these assets in a way that's friendly. Uh, a lot of theme developers who do this kind of stuff don't do it. So just, just watch out for that. Okay, so here are some issues that you might run into when you create child themes, especially when you're working in, uh, on a child theme that is based on something in the commercial space. So theme frameworks, this is, this is the, the kind of thing that, we, that we're getting at here. So if you enable your child theme and you see a bunch of PHP errors that specifically include the uh, words include or require, there are probably framework files that need to be copied in. Usually the nicer uh, theme developers will offer you the downloadable child theme that has that stuff built in already. If they don't, you can still do it yourself, but it, it kind of involves decoding those errors and bringing in the files from the parent theme into yours and making sure that they're included in the right place. So it, it is trickier if you're in that situation. Um, if you see a lot of that and the theme, uh, like you should talk to the theme developer about that. And if they are not responsive, maybe walk away and try and find a different way to, uh, to build things up. Another thing to watch out for, and I've mentioned this before, but if the parent theme updates, you're going to need to update your theme as well. You might not always need to, but when the, just monitor for when the parent theme updates. And when it does, make sure that your theme still works, of course, and having your local copy of WordPress is really good for this. You just download, the, download it onto your desktop, try it out, and then if everything looks good, you can update your live site. But you might end up needing to update a few of the template files if there's some overlap with what the parent theme updated and the things that you've changed. And, uh, if you saw my talk at, at uh, WordCamp last year, you know that I'm a fan of version control and it is issues like this where you have some things that update and you need to make your own updates and wait a minute, what, what just happened, what changed? Version control can be helpful for that. Okay, so I was gonna get to feature plugins. If there was time, there really isn't. We have like five minutes left and I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. So uh, instead I'd like to see if anybody has any questions at this point and then maybe we can uh, table this and talk about it in the unconference room or whatever. Yes? I buy a lot of community because they send you the same one over and over again because they know it works and they need to say, flag this for it. I'm a little confused is, is the adding your, your CSS the best in the child theme area, not in anything that they've provided? I think so, yes. And the, the reason, uh, so the question was, 
is it better to add your custom CSS in, say, an area in the WordPress dashboard that your theme author provides, or is it better to do it in the child theme? I think it's better to do it in a child theme because then it is saved in a file. It's not in the database, and you, uh, I, I mean, basically, that, the short answer is it's not saved in the database. And I, I like having it in those files, which means that for me, I can keep it under version control and know exactly what I'm doing. But it also opens you up to being able to use other tools that can see the changes, like if you use CodeKit or something while you're developing your theme, then uh, you have access to that as well. What about I, I still, if there's, if there's a setting, if it's that big a deal, maybe, but also those kinds of CSS changes are so small that I think just putting them in your CSS file that's loaded on every page is fine. Obviously my concern is it being blown away when it, when it gets something, right? Right, so yeah, child theme, much better for that. I saw, I saw a hand back here, yes? Uh, I've, I'm going to need you to talk a little bit louder. I can't quite make it out. If you create a child theme to a plugin. A child theme for a plugin. No, 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 it's plugin that creates a plugin. Oh, oh, I see. Yes. Go ahead. So, and that plugin gets updated. Do we have to recreate that child theme? So you're talking about uh, a plugin that generates child themes for you. Uh, I'm going to say probably not, because uh, it depends on how those, uh, how those plugins work. But I mean, if it's just generating the uh, child theme for you, it depends on what it does. If it's just doing this simple boilerplate stuff, no. You don't, you don't need to touch it, because all the work that, you will need to have, uh, that you'll need to do is already done. If the, if the way that WordPress interprets child themes happens to change at some, during some release in the future, then you might need to address it. But I, I don't think before then you would. Yes? Oh yeah, that's yes. Thank you. Um, that is the functions.php file. Anything that you add, when you create a functions.php file in your child theme, that does not override the same file in your parent theme. Anything you add to yours is just added to the functions that WordPress calls. And uh, just one thing I want to say about this this deal of feature plugins. Um, I'll just tell you what this is, so you can you can either uh, ask me later for more information. But a feature plugin just refers to a plugin that you write that's specific to your site. And anything that you can put in a functions.php file in a theme, you can put in a very, very simple plugin. And that's, that's what I would advocate for, um, for changes that are not theme specific. So there are a lot of sites that will say, oh yeah, you wanna, you wanna add a custom post type or something and you're not using a plugin for it, then you can add that to your functions.php file in your theme. And that is, in my opinion, not a great idea because as soon as you change that theme or if something else in the theme breaks or who knows what else, you lose, your, you, you lose the user interface for your custom post type. So uh, that's, that's the deal with, with uh, feature plugins in terms of something to look at later. More questions? Yes? Do you, re do you recommend any plugin to do the child theme? Do I recommend any plugins for that? I do not. I, I think that it's, uh, it's great to know how to do it yourself. Um, my, my whole worldview uh, is, is that these things are, uh, and I realize uh, this, is, this is not for everybody and I'm not pretending that it is, but I think it's worth, if you're, if you're a little concerned about it, if, if the reason you're not doing it is because you're a little bit afraid of the difficulty of it, I say try it anyway. Um, so, so for that reason, I don't have any, any recommendations. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I see feeding the child theme. But everything was so all the customization in one day. I got the same problem. File, okay. And according to him, keep the customization of one day in style CSS and the header being PHP. Okay. So if I were to create a child theme to make my life a little easier, all I have to do is to create a child theme, change that template name in that child theme CSS file. and That's all correct, and I'm, I'm going to recap that for everybody. So if, uh, if you're working with, with a site where somebody has done their modifications in the parent theme, first of all, you could be in trouble. 
but it's not, fortunately in your situation, it sounds like something that you, you would be able to work through. So she said that this parent theme has modifications only in the style.css file and the header.php file, both of which are just part of the uh, template files that WordPress itself knows about. So in that case, you can create your child theme, copy those files in, and then you can, if you really want to get crazy with it, you can download a fresh copy of that parent theme mm -hmm. and yeah. pop that in there, saving, of course, the, uh, the modified version because who knows, maybe, uh, maybe there was something they missed. But then you can start completely from, uh, from a fresh copy of that parent theme. You can see, did it actually work? And once again, do it on your own computer. Um, it, it just, it's a lot faster than having to like, deal with FTP and <laughs> files up and down and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yes, you can absolutely do it that way. And that's, every once in a while, I end up having to do that kind of work myself, where it's like, oh, I got to fix this thing that, that somebody wrote in a funny way. So, so yes. Yeah. In my opinion, that feature, uh, in terms of keeping your WordPress site very secure, that feature should be disabled. Um, the, that, and that's that's the, uh, the theme editor that's built into the dashboard. Um, it's a, that, that thing to me is a major, major issue because if a, if a user account gets compromised, then somebody can change every single file in your, in your theme and all of your plugins. So, um, but that said, like if you're if you're willing to accept those risks, um, it's you know if you need to do it there, if that's the the way that works for you, I'm not going to tell you that you can't. Um, I would certainly though recommend that you uh, that you learn how to work in a in a way that you can that you can do things without any connection to the internet at all. You can work just on your own computer, and it just it means that you can experiment more safely. And when stuff breaks, who cares? Yes. Okay, the best way to manage the changes that happen in the parent theme when they update their, their copy of it and you need to update yours. So the best way is with version control um, where, you're, uh, where you're tracking the, the changes and you're checking in over time the files that have changed. If you're, if you're not ready to go there, the next best thing is to use file comparison tools. So, Pretty much any text editor worth its salt is going to have a way to compare line by line the, uh, the changes in two files. And so like, if you use an integrated development environment like PHPStorm, it's got that built in. I also use BBEdit as a text editor, Sublime Text. I mean, they've all got it. There are also uh, what are called diffing tools that you can use totally separately. Um, on Mac OS X, there's a, there's a an application called File Merge that, that you can just open two files and have it show me in a, in a nice graphical way which lines have changed and then it lets you copy the stuff back and forth. So um, that's the kind of thing that you want to look at. Is there a way to do version control without connection to the internet? Is there a way to do version control without connection to the internet? Yes, there is. The most popular way is called Git and uh, that's, that's the version control system that, uh, that GitHub is, uh, is using, and uh, it's called a distributed version control system because there is no internet connection required. Is there a simple way that you recommend to learn Git? Uh, yes, you can, you can either try and find the video of the talk I gave last year. Uh, I also have a, a, a course on lynda.com, which by the way, everybody, uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, residents of LA County or the city of Los Angeles, but you can now access lynda.com for free with your library card. Yes. Um, yeah, people. Always, I, I I love watching people's faces light up and people freak out when they when they know what Lynda.com is and they and they find that out. So yeah, j yeah. Just go go to the go to the homepage of your preferred uh, LA city or county library. Both of them have uh, have links to it, and it's it's just a special portal that you go through, and you can get on there and and. 
it, the reason it's happening, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not on the inside as far as that goes, but that's, I, I'm pretty sure that lynda.com just sold an institutional license to the library systems. I'm not sure if it's on WordPress.tv. I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, question? Are your slides going to be made available? Slides are available right now. And uh, let's go back to the link. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I guess we're, we're, we're done here, yeah? All right, so let me, uh, let me skip through all this. Um, so you can find me at shoefly.us or at the Happiness Bar later. You can review this talk um, at wclax.reviews, as you can review every single talk, and please do. Um, everybody wants to know what you think. And then I'll skip all the way back and give you the link again for these slides. And that's it. Yeah. I was trying to make it bigger, but apparently reveal.js doesn't. Yeah, there we go. So look, woo! Yeah, I can make, I can make that bigger, but the, the rest of it isn't. Uh, oh, wait, I know. There you go. Holy mackerel. There. The large print edition. Um, thanks very much, everyone. <laughs>